check, check. All right, thank you so much, media team. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, once again, you're very, very welcome to our panel discussion today. And the theme is the wings that fly a leader to significance. Now, straight to the point, on my extreme right is Mr. George Bamgemerire. Um, and to his left is none other than Lady Justice Catherine Bamgemerire, who happens to be his mother-in-law's daughter, George's mother-in-law's daughter. <laughs> Yes, and who I should say has owned the name Bamgemerire, and that's a question we'll pose to you, George, at a certain point. How have you managed to, you know, uh, hand over the name? I had to surrender the name. And uh, on my immediate right is none other than Mr. Michael Seguire as well. He's uh, feared in hell and celebrated in heaven. And uh, he walked with his uh, strongest anchor, who happens to be none other than Apophia Seguire, who we always stubbornly refer to as Apple of My Eye, from the name of Apophia. And uh, I want to ask Mr. George, as he prefers to be referred to, uh, how has it been being married to Catherine, Lady Justice? I'll include the title, it's very important. Uh, Madame Dorothy Chisaka said we should mention it as part of the mandate. <laughs> yes. <laughs> How have you managed to keep this mandate remaining significant under the wings? Are you the wind beneath her wings? Thank you very much, uh, uh, Pablo, and thank you, members, uh, for listening to us. Uh, I really, I think that's a, a a difficult question, uh, but it really can't be answered in one sentence. Mm. Uh, I'll nonetheless, be brief. Uh, Catherine and I met when she was uh, a student at Makere University. Uh, I was at LDC, and uh, she came to borrow notes. That's really the foundation of the marriage. The, the marriage was founded in a, a professional context. That's a very good footnote. So, uh, we got married, and uh, uh, one week after honeymoon, uh, obviously one of the reasons I got married, I think it's something I, I had never done, which I wanted to do, uh, and I think Catherine had done aspirations in marriage. So, I was a state attorney in Arua at that time. And we got married, went to Arua. When we got there, we didn't have a house. Our house was still occupied. The house, state attorney's residence was occupied. So we were sharing a house with a, with a policeman in a, in a police barracks. Uh, and after a week in marriage, Catherine actually told me she wanted to leave. Uh, and she was serious. Now, where I come from, nobody had ever divorced. And I'd grown to know that marriages are permanent. So, and over the years, fast, uh, fast forward, I think she eventually endured. We made some adjustments. Uh, but it also dawned to me, dawned on me that... Uh, I think Catherine believed she had married the wrong person. And I too, uh, I wasn't quite sure because I think she was asking for, I did not have. I didn't have a house, okay. I didn't have, you know, I was sharing a house. Uh, and so it was a very complicated setup. But I knew one thing, and at that time, what we had been taught here at Makere in the Christian Union, we've been members of Christian Union, there was, there was a main doctrine which was that Yesu Amala, that was the teaching in Luganda, meaning Jesus is enough. So when we were choosing spouses at that time, there was one criteria members of Christian were looking for. Is a person saved? And if a person says yes, and you proposed and the person accepted, that was a marriage. That was it. So that's, if you ask that what has changed over the years, 
obviously, there is a lot more knowledge. People talk of generational this, the research into the person and all that and all that. That didn't exist at that time. At that time, we knew that Jesus is enough. Now, how does Catherine become a justice? We formed a partnership uh, together. Of the two of us, I was the most senior lawyer. It may happen that now people, you had the Honorable Bahati saying, yeah, Justice Catherine is here with his wife. But I'm actually not, <laughs> not the wife. <laughs> the Bamgemeri name is mine, you know. And I, I was a senior lawyer of the two. Actually, I'm the first person who took Catherine to court. And the day I, I took her to court, she did not sleep. You know, she was asking me the whole night, do we really go to appear magistrate? What do I say? And I wrote out the words. I took her to court. I told her what they say in court. Uh, and after that, I took it upon myself to help her progress in her career. We had some years abroad. When we got abroad, when we, we, we worked in Mexico for two years, we got there, and I told Catherine, go and study in America. I got my savings, paid for Catherine's education at a very good university in America. And that's how she, of course, the story is very long, but she's now a justice. So I think I have a claim uh, over <laughs> Catherine's success. I am part and parcel of her work and her success. We discuss, I participate. I don't feel threatened at all. I actually feel that I'm part of the wings in which she flies. <laughs> All right, another round of applause for George. <laughs> what an investment, huh? Yeah, as you are still on Kameza, you know, instead of investing, so they should do honor um, Lady Justice. Do you agree with the previous speaker or there are some amendments? Okay, this one is working. Thank you so much, Pablo, and thank you so much, Life Ministry, for putting up this um, moment when we can share our stories. Um, and uh, I thank my loving husband, George. You can tell who wins the arguments in the home. <laughs> <laughs> I might be the judge. I might even be the appellate judge, but I don't win the arguments, I can assure you. And um, I agree with the fact line. Yes, I agree with the, with the facts. They are correct, the way we met. And I also know that um, this uh, our marriage is a, a real, it's not just a marriage the way we know it in Africa or in the law or in, in, in the perspective of the world, but it is a, a deep, spiritual partnership and um, the other thing I would like to say is that I um, I suppose that my shock was to find that the house was not ready we actually had a house maybe just to correct that fact line we actually um, so we I came three weeks out of law development center which is the law school when you finish law here you didn't go to law school to be schooled into actually practicing the law. And I got married three weeks after that. I had never lived away from home. I'd never lived away from a boarding house. So it was either home or a boarding house and then marriage. And so it was a shock. There are many, many things which shocked me in, the, in being married. But one of them was not to have my own space and so that's why I was asking the questions. Where is the dining hall table? Where is the... <laughs> but eventually, I think a few weeks later, then the senior secretary who had been occupying the government house moved out. You see, he had the government house and he had the government car and we were the younger ones who had come in and he was not leaving. So eventually he left and I had this whole four bedroom house to myself. So eventually it worked out. <laughs> but, uh, but as it were, I, I, uh, I will be asking questions and I always ask questions, that's my nature. But I thank God that, that 
it looked like a difficult moment, but we got over it. We also got over the Colgate moments, the, the toothpaste moments, where that I believe the toothpaste should be orderly, you know, managed, and uh, the other way is managed sporadically, and I thought that was quite serious. <laughs> but we also got over those ones, and where do you put the shoes, and actually who takes the way? We got, I think we, ma we managed to work ourselves out of those, but the, yes, I, I, I agree that 30 years later, because we got, we became 30 years married on the 19th of September this year. So we are 30 years married now. And in the 30 years, we have two children who are adults. And uh, we've learned to live with each other and to live with them and to, to, to be able to go out there and be professional and at the same time, leave your professionalism at the door as you come in and just be yourself at home. Throw off your shoes, throw off your, your roles. We don't carry roles around our house. Thank you so much, uh, Justice Catherine, uh, for being in agreement with your husband, <laughs> for not allowing martial love to turn into martial arts. Mr. and Mrs. Seguire, for those who know you, uh, say that the older you grow, the younger you look. How do you manage to keep the flame burning between the two of you? I'll start with Apophia. Hello. Thank you very much um, for that question. How do we keep ourselves young? I don't know. I guess uh, one of the things we purposed right from the start was to be friends. And so we've seen our friendship grow over the years. We fight, we make up, we laugh, we play games. We do everything normal friends do. <coughs> One of the other things that we have invested a lot in is spending time together and then doing premarital counseling. And when you talk about premarital counseling, are they counseling you or you're the one counseling others? <laughs> we do counsel young, um, young adults who want to get married and being around young adults who are freshly in love, I guess, rubs off on us as well. All right. Uh, Mr. Seguire, when they mentioned fight, I had you cough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you are in the public uh, sphere with a corporate job. How do you manage to balance family and your leadership roles at your workplace? Yeah. Th thank you very much. Um, I met this girl at church. She was leading fellowship in St. Francis and she was preaching about the lady at the well and she said she was comfortably single and I followed that statement up and that's why we are here. <laughs> How do we keep, I mean at the end of the day the titles have come um, but the center has to hold. The center has to hold in a sense that even though I work, meet all these big people, whatever money brings, I have seen it that I need to find my comfort at home. And um, I make time for that. As a matter of fact, I made a decision that I will not work on Saturday very many years ago. And I purpose to be around the family. Creating time, I can tell you, the longest we have been apart is not more than three weeks in the 18 years of marriage. Wow. So we purpose at all costs, and uh, that also means letting go of certain opportunities uh, and ensuring that the bigger thing is us being together and, and finding value in sharing life. So that's how I balance. Once you organize your priorities, I believe you get it right. Wow, God has been good to you. You haven't had to be apart for three weeks, yay. 
what happens when one of you travels or <laughs> as counselors, what advice do you give people who work, you know, in other countries and they only get to miss to meet for only three weeks? <clears throat> Look, life has choices. Um, one of our mentors made a choice where they had to let go of a scholarship as long as they were not moving along together. And before then, another scholarship showed up which gave them the opportunity of moving along together. I've also seen it in my own life where people made a decision to, to leave one behind and the other goes. And before long, there's another relationship the other side. With those examples, I've tried to avoid it. I've tried to make decisions where we are coherent. Uh, I also thank God that uh, I've not seen those opportunities which take me away for a month. Um, but yeah, we keep it together. And by the way, it's quite lonely when I am away. So I don't really enjoy those trips. I try as much as possible to come back home and enjoy stuff. Ah, thank you so much. Uh, I'll throw this to Mr. George. Uh, given your nature of work, and I know it's very demanding, there's a point in time when uh, Justice Catherine was in our faces during the commission time. Uh, and I do believe it must have been a very tough moment. How, what are some of the tips can you give the marrieds to handle such situations when uh, your spouse or spice is extremely busy for the domestic work. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, as I indicated earlier, career growth is actually a process. And I think as a country, it's important that we try to develop people so that they can take the the weight of assignments that they are given. I think that, that, that's a, the, the starting point. If Catherine was handling these commissions 25 years ago, uh, my, my response would have been different. But over the years, you know, over the 30 years, we, we, we spent, of the 30 years, we spent 10 of them abroad, overseas. And when we were overseas, obviously, we we were just the four of us in the house, and we do everything. You know, you can't afford a, a house help in London, you know, uh, or in Mexico. So you do everything. We cook, we wash dishes. And that practice, by the way, has continued up to now. We don't have a housemaid in the house. We wash the dishes. Now, don't ask me who does more of the washing. There was a... <laughs> I saw on a radio TV program one time, when I think when Catherine was doing the commission, and uh, Gaitan and his friend were asking, so who in that house washes the dishes? And the other man said, of course it's the man. <laughs> no, no, sometimes she washes them. <laughs> uh, uh, so we have developed mechanisms of, of coping with stress. But the second thing, and maybe the, uh, the second thing is that as a family, we learned that uh, uh, marriage is actually a spiritual relationship. It's not just a physical relationship. So we learned to pray. And by praying, I mean kneeling on the ground every morning and praying through what the day will look like, the fears we have, the opportunities, and the challenges. Something we've done for, for many years. Because we realized that as long as we did not pray, you know, first of all, we'd disagree, we'd face so many problems. So we learned it, we learned that practice when we were working in London. So I learned to, to pray. But thirdly, it's taking deep interest in what Catherine does. You know, I told you of the two, I'm the most senior lawyer. And I, I'm sorry to repeat this, I'm not trying to demean Catherine, but I take that leadership role, even in the legal profession, very seriously. So I know what Catherine is doing. I know how she's doing it. If something goes wrong and I watch on television, say, when we get home, say, Catherine, I think you talked badly. That could have been phrased differently. So I'm a very active participant in, uh, in, Catherine's, in Catherine's life. And remember, at that time, I was a deputy IGG. So I also had a, a very busy job uh, in my office. 
but I kind of felt that Catherine was a, a kind of flag bearer. She's the one who is more well known than me. There's been a situation, like there's a man called Tamali Mirundi. Somebody sent me a clip where I said, you know, actually, Bam Gemereire is me. It's not when they say that the husband of Bam Gemereire has been uh, fired or something. It's, it's actually, I, I, I take that responsibility seriously. What Dorothy was talking about, that as a head of a home, I, have, I learned about land, I learned about KCCA, I learned about UNRWA, I learned about how commissions operate, how to interrogate. And Catherine, fortunately, you know, when we get home and I give a critique of what I have seen on TV, you know, she may get angry, but the, the anger goes down. But I feel that it's my responsibility to give her feedback and to make Catherine a better person, a more effective person. Because when she shines, I also feel that I, sh I don't get threatened at all. So mm -hmm. we, I would say, I'm, I'm very supportive of Catherine in many, many ways through prayer, through participation, as much as possible. And I think this is something that uh, families should do. If you have, we are now in Uganda where I think the women are shining more than the men. Fellow men, my advice to you, don't get into guerrilla warfare against your wife. Don't feel threatened. Don't get into investigation and snooping. Take interest in what your partner is doing. Learn to understand and be supportive. There will be bad moments. Catherine had some terrible encounters when she would be condemned by the newspapers, by people, and so on. But I would say, I am the last line of defense in this family. I, we, we either rise together or fall together. In summary, be part and parcel, up to the very detail of what your spouse is doing, and learn to enjoy it. Our situation is easier because we are both lawyers, uh, so the field is not too different. But even if you are in different professions, please demonstrate some interest. There will be some value you'll have as a partner. You know somebody, uh, Dorothy was talking of a builder, you know, Peter the builder. You know, you can actually volunteer some information. I like that design. And you may be surprised the value of your input as an objective onlooker to, the, to what somebody is doing. But if you abandon the work to her, yes, you'll find a colleague at work who will become best friend, wiser, shoulder to lean on, and please don't complain what will happen thereafter. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. George. Well, one of the things that um, most of us married men, especially in the Christian circles, we struggle with... Um, one of the verses which says, uh, wives, submit to your husbands. Men, love your wives like Christ loved the church. Now, we understand the part of men submit, I mean women submit to your husbands. But we have never known how much Christ loved. What kind of love we should give to our wives like Christ loved the church. So I will pose the part of the lady to Lady Justice. What is submission in this context, especially with people like you in the public sphere who are seen to be powerful? At what point do you submit in that context? Thank you very much. And um, I would again want to defer, and I think that's the whole, I, I mean, for me being in the legal profession and understanding how our work works has also helped me to understand the word submission even better. And, 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 and um, nothing that the, the Lord or the Bible says is said in vain. In, in the law profession, for instance, you, you defer to a person who is more senior to you. You defer. It, when the Bible says submit, it, it, it means that it's giving you that um, opportunity to, to be able to defer to somebody else, to defer to your spouse in this case. And uh, for me, I have no, I don't know, as a person, I have no problem with understanding that George is the head. And, um, and I have actually no problem taking, taking the feedback, taking, I, I, he does most of the leading. I am actually, Although I'm, I'm, a, I'm such a good interrogator when I'm in charge of a commission, I have the skills, 
I can I can tear a person to pieces, and sometimes that will be misunderstood. I, I, I can do my work really well, but I don't take that at home. Right? At home, we, we have a very collegial way of working. So, so first, uh, the way we understand submission is not so much that God, George is going to give me orders. And I don't know how you do it in your homes, but I would suggest that if you're living with millennials or living with uh, people who have got some exposure, I, I think the style of leadership that you, you practice at your home really matters. And for me, I thank God for George because he does not, that he does not do leadership in a way that is so offensive as to, to create any sort of um, contestation from me. And that even when we, when, I, when, I, when we think we need to talk about something, there is space, there is uh, opportunity to discuss. And, and I think that is important. Submission doesn't mean that you're just taking orders like a dummy. I think that we need to, 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 bring, to contextually manage the, the way we understand the, the, the Bible and, 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 and break, it, break it down, deconstruct it for a, a particular uh, situation so that we are able to live happily and to live peacefully. And, and, and I, one of the things we find, I've found, because I've been a family judge as well, I've found with many couples when they came to us and they wanted to, you know, um, to end their marriages, before we actually, uh, personally, before I, I thought you should go through this whole procedure, we had moments with them, said, do you really want to do this? Do you really want to go down this road? Do you, can, you, can you communicate? Because one of the things, again, there is how well do you communicate for you to understand submission? I don't want to talk on too long. But I think that we need to understand that submission is not, it, it is not so impossible. It is workable. You just need to understand your roles. The head sits on a, on, a, on a neck. The neck sits on a shoulder. The head doesn't sit in the air. So if the head, the man is ahead, the, the, you, the woman may be the rest of the shoulders or the body, the, the, the way it works, yeah? So you, you need to understand that he can't sit, he can't be in the air, in a vacuum. You need to understand that you work as a whole body. And, and when we know that, even when our children know that, they, we then can work well together. In fact, in our home, Whenever we are going to do something important, like when we had to go for expatriation out of this country, I was a chief magistrate. And being a chief magistrate at the time was, okay, uh, meant that I had to ask for leave to leave my profession to join George, wherever he was going. And we prayed about it. And when we prayed about it, God gave us direction. And uh, so that I, for, me, for me, those are the forms of submission. From there, we went to London. Went to Mexico, went to London. I knew, I knew that at that point, we need to support George. So this has not been a one way. So when people see me now as a justice, I haven't always been. It is, most of the times, actually, we were, we were called trailing spouses in Shell. Like you trail your spouse, uh, but, in, but not in a bad way. We were actually given a lot of privileges for being an accompanying spouse. But that is part of, for me, the submission. Because as a professional, I could have said, I am highly educated, I'm a professional, I'm not going to follow. But I thought, this is good for my family, it's good for my children, I'm going with George. Thank you so much. Uh, in case you have a question for either George, uh, Justice Catherine, or Apophia, or Michael, please you can write it and give it to an usher, and, they'll, and you direct to the person who you want to answer it, and then we shall get back to you shortly. I'll go to you, Michael. You talked about premarital counseling, but then there's the after, aftermath when people are now married and some of us are afraid to come to counselors, you know, because of our ego. How should men love their wives now that we are here? Can you tell us how, sh like how Christ loved the church? That's, that's where I derive my question. How should we do it? despite their temperaments? Mm. Thank, thank you very much, Pablo. That's a very nice question. And um, it just reminded of uh, 
it just reminded me of the journey here. So I was not around most of this week, came back last night about midnight, just in time for this meeting today. And I had to do an errand in the morning just before I came here. And uh, as a result, the times were very tight. So we get here, and my wife is not the type that wants to walk for very long distances. She had high heels, and I'm like, yeah, but by the way, on the panel. So we used the bypass, came through the other gate, technology, they checked us, reached down there, parked the car, got out of the car, walked, and we were like, no, you have to use the other end. We were like, you know, these are orders. Order is order. Uh, my wife tries to bargain, and you know, remember we're on the panel, right? I have to bring every situation. So we move that side, but I realize maybe let's park there, Senate building. So I park at the Senate, then try to get up there. We realize, no, no, you still have to go around. And we had to trek the journey. We are on the panel. Now, I could choose to hit back and say so many things. Christ could actually choose on the cross. He can say, by the way, I can get off this cross and just hammer all of you. But you submit. Today we can talk about it and laugh about it. Men, we need to be mature. You are the head. Manage the situation. Study it. You can lose a few battles. Win the bigger side of the war. Win the war. Stay in love. See the bigger picture. You don't have to pick up a fight on everything. That's maturity. You graduate from the Colgates. Now you get to start experiencing different things. That is a call. And for us, doing counseling has prepared because you can't give what you don't have. And we actually do it at home. So we've told ourselves, let the people come and see the lab at home. And that keeps us in check because we have to sort ourselves out before we give what we ought to give. And in the process, we are better people. We are a better couple. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, uh, Michael. Apophia, in our midst here, there could be somebody who's at the verge of uh, saying it's over. You know, they have um, listened to you, maybe it looks, it looks like a successful story for both of you couples, but I could be at the verge of uh, calling it quits even after this place. What advice do you give a person who's at the edge of uh, calling off the marriage? Thank you, Pablo. I actually thought about such people as coming. And this is what I have to say. Please find someone, any person. Just share with that one person. I always believe share, a burden shared is always halved. Many times we end up in ditches because we are too proud to share. I don't want to talk about my marriage, that it is having issues. You've just witnessed what we do. For us, we share our lives. Whether we fight, whether we laugh, we talk about it. So it is not unique to you. Even the people for 30 years, they also had their fights, but then they learned to talk. I believe there is someone that you can walk to. I have had a number of ladies come up to me and we really have a candid conversation. So what is the main reason that you think you can't go on with this person? And when we try to actually dissect, because sometimes you make a mountain out of, you know, a molehill, a molehill. And, and for us ladies, you've just had walking up that whole journey in my heels, like he has said. It was not easy. And maybe it's the taking care of the child. You've just given birth and you're waking up all that time and you're feeling tired, but then there's still work to do. 
And maybe your spouse is the kind that doesn't know how to do housework like George has said. Find somebody, share with a person, and try to ask. I always tell people, when you find someone you share with, trusted, a person that has been through the seasons, you'll always find a shoulder to lean on, somebody who will point you to God. And, and usually, it is just a prayer of God, give me the grace for one more day. I don't understand this phase. I, I really, we didn't talk about this prayer thing, but we actually pray every day too. You kneel and say, God, by the way, even as we are praying, you know I'm very angry at Michael. Yeah? He did this yesterday, he did this, and even now as we are talking, he's saying we go together. I don't feel like going with him, but now you're God, I'm reporting your son to you. Help us to work this out. And it works, friends. Prayer works. And, and when you do it over and over again, just like every child, there's no child, the Bible tells us that who of you, when your child asks for bread, you give them stones. If you know how to give good gifts, how much more me, your father in heaven? So there is a God that we can run to. Run to God. Even when you think it is the end. I like the fact that they say that marriage is spiritual. It is not a lie. You are not married to this person by mistake. Before you consider anything, just know there is also a spiritual bit that you have to deal with. And, and every spiritual battle is won in the spirit. You won't go physical and win. I want to tell us, I've been seeing so many divorces going around, and I always ask, what is that unresolvable, unreconcilable incident that people can't work through? And every time you give your friend chance to listen to you, to pray with you, to find another perspective. You know, sometimes I, for example, me, I'm a daughter of an army man, so I grew up knowing Men handle security. Guess what? In his home, he grew up knowing the mother handles security. Do you see what uh, Dorothy was talking about? So from the word go, I remember those first days, I actually called my father and said, there's a big problem. This guy doesn't look, he doesn't check. I mean, I have to be awake to close off. And what did we do? Like they did, we sat down. We actually said, let's see, where is this problem? We sat down, and I realized that everything that my father modeled was not necessarily what Michael was. And I remember him, those first years, you keep telling me, I'm not your father, I'm your husband. <laughs> and so some of the things that you hold on, or the notions that you believe are supposed to be, they are actually not true. What does the Bible say about your particular marriage? I liked what uh, Dorothy said. What is the mandate for your marriage? Because every marriage is created by God. What did God say about your marriage? Let's seek each other in prayer, in love, in confidence. Let's share with one another and see how we can help one another to keep going. Thank you so much, uh, Apophia. Well, you've spoken from a biblical point of view now. There could be some people here, maybe they don't conform to the patterns of the spiritual, you know, conversation, and um, they have the, their challenge. Maybe they, that's not their path. How then could they solve such a, situ a, a situation? Because it has been proven that most conflicts in marriage rotate around power, sex, and money. That's where they rotate around. So if a person feels that these three or one of them has successfully failed and they're not fire-spitting, demon-chasing, they only go to church on Christmas to pay tithe, how would you deal with such? What message there for such a person? Because it could be a passerby or somebody in that space. That's the particular person I'm looking at, not 
uh, those who are well versed with Genesis to Revelations. Yeah, George, you can jump in as well. Thank you. I still believe in seeking out help, talking to one another. I have realized that us as women, we tend to work so well in sharing with each other. Do you have that one trusted friend that you can talk to? And bring in another, because when you bring in a friend, they help you to see what you're not seeing. In my, that, that's what I think. And when you bring in that third eye, they will always say, but how did you handle this? Okay, you're saying, because you're saying the money is not working. You're bringing in much more money than he's doing. So what else, what is that good thing that this person is doing? I remember one person also told us that when you're getting married, they don't put a gun at your, you know, to your head and say, get married to this person. You chose this person out of love. So ignoring that bit, that we come in so many shapes and sizes. Maybe your particular spouse is not as tall or is not as gifted with money like you are. What are they gifted at? What is the other option that you can look at? Where are they winning? Give them that chance to win in that area. And then you win in the other area. Remember, you're supposed to be a team working together. We all can't be on media. We all can't be in finance. We all can't be. They are finance people. They are media people. They are lawyers. So where is your niche in this marriage? Okay, thank you so much. I'll, I'll pass over the button to George, Mr. George. Thank you very much. Uh, I think that's a really profound question uh, because marriage is one of those experiences that uh, is actually universal and it's been going on for a long time, I think since the creation of man. And it involves two strangers coming together to start a life. So there are a lot of practical issues around this relationship that we need to pay attention, attention to. One, I like the church stand, where they demand that let people write a contract. You know that ceremony of signing ceremony. It's actually a legal, uh, a legal physical, uh, human intervention where people write and agree, we are taking this risk, so and so and so and so, uh, agreeing to start living a life together. This life may result in, this union may result in children whom we are going to raise together. They even go as far as saying there may be sickness, there may be, what are those? Uh, sickness and health, uh, for poorer, for richer. You know, these are all very deeply well thought through life situations that everybody encounters, but Sander guarded by a contract saying, yes, the way I see it, we are signing off till death doth us part. Now, what is in that package? I see one of the challenges is lack of knowledge. We need to be, I say, Peter, the Honorable Minister of Education, first aid has left, but we probably need to start teaching marriage from the beginning. Children, teaching children. This institution of marriage, because we sometimes think it's something that evolves naturally. You know, you grow up, grow a beard, another girl grows breasts, they come together. But a lot of people are actually entering marriage uh, without any knowledge. What does it involve? What is this commitment? What am I signing off to? So we need to improve the knowledge side. We need to teach people about marriage. Now, it may be difficult for our generation and below, but I think it's one of the policy interventions we need to include, you know, curriculum is being reviewed all the time. Why don't we teach about this marriage? Children, to know the mandate, Dorothy was explaining mandate here. I'm hearing it for the first time and I'm over 50 years. That marriage has mandate. How many people here had heard about marriage mandate? Why don't we teach that? People know marriage involves a following. You are going to share a bed. You are going to share a room. You are going to share a house. You are going to share raising children. You are going to share raising wealth. You are going to share so on and so forth by this legal instrument. Number two, the issue of accountability. 
you know, we are accountable when we invite people to public these relationships and say it's going to be an exclusive relationship. They do it in public. Now, you are being accountable to the people who are witnesses. You are being accountable to your friends, your parents, and so on. But you know there is another constituency right now, which is the, the children. Families are the uh, foundations of, of a nation, as I think has been explained. Think about it today. Do you know that a future president of this country lives in a certain home, and we don't know which family that is? Somebody in this country is raising the president, the minister like Bahati, the judge like Catherine, and all these people, Mr. Nanga there. There is somebody raising that character. But maybe that parent doesn't even know and doesn't know that they owe it to us as a country, all those who will be here, to be modeling for us a person who is going to be useful. Today, Dr. Senyonya wrote an article in New Vision where they, I think, gave an illustration saying, the family is actually a workshop. I really like that. It's a workshop. Please, parents, let's all get our hands dirty because we are generating people whom we don't know what they'll become. But the impact will be felt by others. It may not be the parent. Because sometimes the, we really need to get a way of shaming parents. If your children do bad things, we need to get them to know that actually it's traced back to you. I'll finish with a little story. When we were in the UK, we, there's a time we had so many disagreements in our home. We didn't agree on anything. We even separated rooms, I think, at some point. So Catherine, it's me who left, not she, she stayed. Then uh, at the end of the term, we went to visit our son's, our son's school. He was in a very good school in, uh, in Surrey, UK. So when we got there, the teachers asked us, uh, I mean, we were like, just like all other parents, we were all waiting to hear about the performance of our son. And then the teacher asked us, said, you know, we have not seen your son uh, for the whole term. And he said, but he boards a train every day and comes here, he gets off. And they said, no, he actually comes to school, but when he gets to school, he goes to the library to watch uh, YouTube Arsenal. As now, we hadn't known that fact, but we immediately knew what the problem was. This boy had been feeling unsafe in the house. And for us, we resolved from then on, we shall never leave, we shall stick there, whatever happens, with God, God with us, because we realized a failed marriage doesn't only affect, affect the two of you. Because the two of you can go. So, well, you know, and, and we are not saying that people should stay in a home if it's abusive. and it's Because there are those families where the relationship actually breaks down and the best thing is for people to go their separate ways. But in many cases, many of the relationships are, can be salvaged through help. And lastly, it's that issue that if you are that theory is actually destroying a lot of families. Because it's a bit of tolwa, people bottle, bottle up what Apophia said, something small, a noise, a person, and boils, it's out, you know, and goes and announces that I'm actually out of the marriage. Actually, this kutotola needs to happen. I think there should be a window for people to kutotola before they leave the family. Because the consequences and don't just affect you, the parent, but they affect children and grandchildren and other generations and sometimes your work and so on. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. George Bamgemerire. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have run out of time. Uh, I have very many questions for all of you, but uh, in the interest of time, we might not uh, delve into them, but we'll hand them over to Life Ministry Uganda, and I'll be sharing the contacts shortly. But I'll ask Mr. Michael just to hint about money since he deals with money in regard to relationships. Just yeah. in two minutes and then we'll wrap up this. Yes, I in two minutes. I, I, I work in a bank, so when it comes to money, it gets very interesting. 
But 20 years ago, uh, as I told, uh, I met this girl, and um, we, we come, I come from a family that, you know, had had challenges on finances side. So they had sold our house due to, you know, bad loans and stuff. So I, I purposed that I needed to have land before I set out for marriage. So I got 11 million shillings, 2002. Um, went to Nigeria 1. For those who know Nigeria 1, the tarmac stopped in Intinda. And we grabbed a border to Nigeria. I was with a friend of mine, a lawyer, and everything was set to buy the land. And um, I said, she's my girlfriend, remember? But I wanted to start off on that front. And I'm like, this, this land here, it's 11 million shillings, 25 decimals behind the shell in Nigeria. And uh, she said, this is a village. How do we come to this village? And she said, oh, you're not saying you're not comfortable? Fine. All right, if you're not comfortable, I intend to start off together. Um, 11 million shillings was on my account. We chewed the money we enjoyed our dating. Disappeared. Fast forward. We are probably three years into marriage. Two years, and uh, we see this piece of property. For me, I get access to good credit. So I get this credit, I'm like, buy this property. I usually go jogging, then I see another one who was just desperate, running to, uh, they were going to America, so they just wanted to let go of this property. It was in a very bad shape, but I tend to reorganize things. And I tell Muchala, but it is this property, this company was supposed to rehabilitate the other one, but we have it. Can we use it? She says, no. I'm like, oh my God. She has said no. And for me, everything was playing back Nigeria route. Men, we need to get advice. I had to bring in my best man to say, you know, just help me in this situation and talk to my wife. My best man had to come and uh, look at the plot, look at the property, get to understand our financial dynamics. I opened the books of accounts to my best man because I wanted to start off on the right footing. And my best man managed to convince her. I think it's a good decision. Yes, yes. And we came on board. Friends, we brought that property. I want to say two things. One, it is in both our names, Mr. and Mrs. Apo Michael and Apophia Seguire, number one. Two, it is okay to share your pin. It is okay to have a joint account. It is okay because you say all that I have, I give to you. All that I am, I share with you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Michael. Uh, I think it's by grace that you started together, but there are those who find you with what you have, and it's hard to hand over. Uh, <laughs> that will be a question for another day. Thank you so much. Uh, maybe your parting words. I'll start with Mr. George just in a, a minute. Just to say, uh, to thank Life Ministry uh, for, for organizing this uh, event. I don't know where the idea came from, but it's a great event. The future of the country lies in the family. If we have a broken family, let's expect a broken country. Let's expect broken politics. Let's expect broken economy. Let's expect broken education. The need to strengthen families is urgent, and everything must be done to strengthen the family unit. The country will only be as good and strong as the family unit. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. George. I'll now invite Lady Justice Catherine. Thank you very much. Um, we need to understand that you get married for life. You can have a dog for Christmas, 
you, some, but of course, even dogs are yours to keep. You can have a gift for Christmas, but when you get married, you get married for life. I, I have believed that from the very beginning. That's why I never left the bedroom. <laughs> and whatever happens, you know, you know, I'm here to stay. And, um, and eventually it works out all right when you, st when you stick in there. But of course, I would need to say that with a rider. If there is excessive physical abuse or uh, abuse that leads to mental problems, then that needs to be addressed differently. But uh, if we are just dealing with uh, uh, the normal wear and tear in a marriage, I would um, really advise couples who are going through that and almost want to think about leaving, please think again. Because if you get over this problem, it will make you stronger for the next season. You know, I, I, I was an expatriate's wife. I, and we, are, we are meant to be pampered. And when you're, when you're out there, you look like you're really pampered. And yet, we are, yeah, yet you're here, it's not, it's not very easy. But when we got over that, we became stronger. Now, we are in a different place. And my advice to the girls who are maybe in a situation where you're the one earning and maybe earning a bit more than he is, is don't, don't create a situation that makes your spouse feel inadequate. Keep the respect, keep the love going, keep, the, 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 keep him smart. What, I mean, I understand where Dorothy was coming from. You, you, want, you want him to look good for you, I, but, yeah, but, but in a situation where, for instance, you're the one who earns more, make sure that you, and you do your finances well and, and it doesn't um, conflict eventually with the way that he, he, he understands you to be. So please get out there, be, be, be loving to each other. I can't overemphasize the one Corinthians love, that, that love that's patient that love that's kind, that love that's understanding, that love that will get out of its way and, 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 and really be able to overcome difficult situations. We need that in this country in order to avoid domestic violence, in order to avoid, you've seen them all over those papers. We need them to avoid all kinds of ills, to avoid children becoming, my son my, that my husband is talking about is now an MBA. He holds an MBA, and uh, he was he was able to finish his first degree and his second degree, and he's he's a very and he's a very good chap, a very kind person. Bri let let us bring up the next generation with a view that they are the next who will carry on the light. So I want to once again thank Life Ministry for this opportunity to speak to the country. We felt actually as a family, even with everything we have enjoyed, have experienced, that our life is not just George, Catherine, and our two children. We feel like our life is, jo is, is really meant to enrich the country and enrich the world. And that's why we are not ashamed to work and we are not ashamed to serve. And I do hope that in this congregation there will be somebody who says, I've learned something and I can keep this going. It is for life and it is good. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Lady Justice Catherine Bamgemere. Uh, Mrs. Apopia Seguaya. Yes, I still want to say share. A burden shared is always a burden halved. Do not stay in, though. don't close in and keep that thing there. I don't know, when we buy cars, when it is on the road for two, three hours, you need to put in fuel. I love the fact that Life Ministry has talked about a weekend to remember. Have time to go back and rekindle. For some marriages, you only go for honeymoon on honeymoon. Please, take time. Service the marriage. Create time to go away from home, talk through issues, 
have somebody, a trusted couple, a trusted friend that you will share with and allow them to um, check you. There are many times when we've had people call in and ask, how are you doing? How is the sex area? How is the finance? How are the children? How is your relationship with Michael? Have that one person that can check in. And then don't be scared to tell, to tell that person accountability is what George called it. Let's have those people that we can be accountable to. And every marriage can survive. Every marriage can survive. I still believe that strongly. Thank you so much, Mrs. Apofia Seguaya. I'll now hand over to Mr. Michael Seguaya. Okay. For, for me, I'm going to paint a picture. You have worked so hard. You have been blessed. The children have gone to school. And it's now 60 years. The bank is saying thank you very much. Maybe the children have gone to New York, they're in Europe, China, wherever. They may be in town, but they are married, moving on with life. And at 60 years, God is... You have another 30 years to go. Just imagine how you end your life. With this person you have not invested... earth every day. Friends, let's invest in each other today because we don't know what decisions God is making. If well, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Go date your wife and uh, don't turn martial love into martial arts because if symptoms persist, we shall call SCP Enanga to do his job. <laughs> All right, thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for your kind uh, uh, words as well as those who are watching this. Thank you so much for giving us the most expensive gift, and that is your time. I love